Well, good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. You guys are a loud bunch today. That's good, right? It's going to be loud in the morning. You might as well get ready, right? We're glad to have all of you here. Welcome, special welcome to all of you visiting, joining us, uh, all of you online today. Uh, we're glad to have all of you here today, and so special welcome and a special Merry Christmas from, from Jen and I and our family. We're, we're glad to have each of you today. Um, just a few few fun things, and then kids, will we'll get you involved in the message, and uh, I want to hear from you guys first, because that's, that's really important. First of all, kids, thanks for being in here this morning, uh, whether you're a young kid or a teenager or an old kid. Any old kids in here? Like, we're all old kids. I'm an old kid, so we're glad to have all of you with us. In fact, you'll be with us the next two weekends, so this weekend and next Sunday. Uh, don't forget, next Sunday, we'll, we'll be meeting at a different time. It's, a, it's our fifth Sunday. Anytime we have fun, Fifth Sundays, we all come together in one service, so it'll start at 10 o'clock. So if you show up at 9, you'll be on the volunteer team, all right, for the 10. And then, uh, but be, come on out at 10, and we, we'd love to have you. We've got uh, a dedica- baby dedication already set up. We've got a baptism. So if you want to be water baptized or you want to dedicate your child, there's still room. We'd still love to uh, have you be part of that. We'd be honored to do that with you. Um, but we'll be here what time next week? 10. There you go. All right. Don't forget. It's on our website if you, if you forget, um, but we'll, we'll be excited to have you as well. Also, we have a gift for you today to go along with our series we've been in, and it kind of uh, worked out. God is, God is good that way. So it's, uh, our series is called His Name Will Be Called, and we've been going through different names of Christ, but outside as you walk out today, uh, we have a gift for you for one uh, for each family, so one per family, and so uh, there's just uh, some ornaments for your tree, and uh, so we'll be handing those out to you as you go out, but they'll, they say Savior, or they'll say, you know, there's all kinds of different names for a lot, there's Jehovah, a lot of good ones, so don't fight over the one that you want, just grab one and be kind, there'll be, there'll be many over there, but you'll see a, a little tree, but they're right out in the lobby, they'll be handing them out for you, so take one of these homes, just be careful, they're fragile, and so they're wood, uh, but they're very fragile, and so you don't want to break the name of Jesus, is all I'm saying, you don't want to be breaking that, but, uh, but we're, we're We'll be blessed to give on those, so you can grab those on your way out today, too. All right, kids, how many of you guys are ready for the morning? Kids, any, ready, any kids ready for the morning? All right, I'm going to go around and, and get, some, get some input, get some feedback. So let me see. What time, here, I'm going to grab you real quick. What time are you waking up tomorrow, brother? What time are you going to get up? up? What time are you waking up? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. You ready for that? <laughs> Five. What time are you getting up? I'm sleeping in. You're sleeping in? So your job is to wake her up, then them up at five. Awesome, good. All right, what time are you getting up, big man? You getting up early in the morning? Three. <laughs> I'm going to bed early. I love that, I love that, I love that. What time are you getting up early in the morning? What time are you going to get up tomorrow? Say early, early. What time? 47. 47? Wow, that is powerful. If you make that happen, that's the miracle of all miracles. That's pretty powerful. 47, 47. All right. How many other? Uh, let's talk about, let's talk to this one over here. What time are you waking up in the morning? Um, five o'clock. Five o'clock. Good, good. That's really good. So now they're, they're prepping a schedule. What time are you getting up, brother? Three? Good, good. Yeah, you? 100. 47, 100, it sounds like a football game, right? It sounds like, <laughs> that'd be great. All right, how about this, kid? What, what are we eating for breakfast tomorrow? Ooh, what are we having? Pancakes, pancakes. Can I come over? Can I come over for pancakes? What? Yeah, I can come over? Oh, good. What are you having for breakfast? Waffles and pancakes, the breakfast of champions. What are you having for breakfast? Cinnamon rolls. Oh, I'm definitely coming over for cinnamon rolls. All right, how about up here? Anybody up here? What are we having for breakfast? Anybody? Any special breakfast? Oh, I'll look at over here. We got the Wheeler boys. He's ready. What are we having for breakfast? Cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls? Chocolate. Chocolate. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Yes. Yes. <laughs> are you really going to eat chocolate? Yeah. You are. Oh, my goodness. Oh, your, your parents are in trouble tomorrow. Uh, you having chocolate too? Sure, all right. What do we want for, so this may be a surprise. We're gonna ask some kids, what are you hoping to open up tomorrow? What are you hoping to get for a present? I Nintendo Switch. What is it? Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch? Do you know what I want to have? What? A cookie dough. Cookie dough. <laughs> I'm starting to get a pattern. Chocolate, cookie dough, what else? 
a race car. So that'll be fun. So you're going to race a race car while eating chocolate and cookie dough. What are you hoping for? A Fortnite Nerf gun. What? What? Add that to everybody else. What else we want for anybody else want to share? What are you hoping for for Christmas? How about some? How about some? Yeah, go ahead. Hot Wheels track. Mom and Dad, you're getting that on your list. You got to make sure, or it may just appear. Anybody else? How about some? How about some teenagers? Any teenagers hoping for some good stuff this week, this year? Anybody? None of you guys want to be, yeah, oh, she was pointing at her. What are you hoping for? Clothes. Clothes. Anywhere specific? No, just clothes. Random clothes. Random clothes. All right, good. All right, we'll, we'll drop some off for you. All right. All right, well, uh, we're excited for tomorrow as well. I think everybody's got a big plans, and so thank you for uh, being here. We got, uh, uh, I was... I wasn't sure, but this is a good full house. So uh, you guys got to come back at six, all right? So, but uh, I figured everyone's got plans for Christmas Eve. Uh, well, we're in a series, and I, I promised I'd keep you for one hour, all right? So we're already a half hour in. So 30 minutes, kids. I promised we'd be, we'd be out by 12 so you, can, so you can run, and so parents can get a nap and get ready for the 47, 100, 3, and 5, right? There we go. There we go. Uh, we already got an early Christmas present with our Steeler win, which is great. Yes. Boo. Who, who booed? Tackle that guy. Ushers, get him. Whoever booed. That's good. All right, his name will be called. All right, so we're in a series. Today we're going to talk about one of the names called Prince of Peace. That's one of the names. So Isaiah 9, 6 is our theme scripture, and so we're going to read that as we open up. For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. This is what Christmas is all about. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called, this is where we get the series from, Wonderful Counselor. We started there, week one. Mighty God, we're gonna talk about next week. Everlasting Father, we talked about last week, and today, Prince of Peace. And so, uh, how, many, how many of you, Christmas time, you know you're supposed to associate it with peace, but there's not much peace, Anybody else have that situation, right? It's supposed to, we know that it's supposed to be about peace, but how many of you honestly say it? it's pretty chaotic? It's pretty wild, right? And so today I want to talk about peace, but maybe from the perspective of where the scriptures talk about it, because um, a lot of times we make peace what it's not about, right? If, well, if I could just, if 2023 would just end, anybody have that kind of year? Or like, if it would just end, then peace will come. How many of you know the calendar doesn't dictate peace? right? If I could just get that job or that, that raise, then, then I would feel more peaceful. How many of you know money doesn't dictate peace? If I could just graduate high school or college or get through elementary school, middle school, then there peace would come, right? It's not dictated by any of those things. You know, what I love about this theme scripture is, uh, the Bible defines peace as a person, not as something that you can obtain, not as something you can achieve, not as something that you could even, uh, you know, buy or get or marry. Maybe some of you are like, if I could just get that boyfriend, girlfriend, or spouse, then I'd be happy. But the Bible tells us peace is Jesus. Peace is the Messiah. When the Messiah would come, we would see the prince of peace. Don't you love how he de defines it as royalty? Like Jesus is ushering in peace. When I drive into school, uh, you know, at times, sometimes we drop off our kids, not very often, not anymore. They're, they like the bus, but sometimes when we drive our kids, they have this plaque right by the flagpole and it says, peace on earth. Everyone wants peace on earth. Everybody. And we know that comes from a scripture, peace on earth and goodwill towards men, but it's talking about Jesus. A lot of times we take these out of context, like like peace on earth is, is something we could obtain or we could have, or it's a nation that we live in or a, a home that we can get. But peace is, found, is, is in the Messiah. Isaiah tells us when he comes, you're gonna see this is his name. This is who he is. Peace is, is, is something that exudes out of Christ. It's not something like, well, he's having a good day, so you get peace. No, Jesus is always peace. Christmas is about Jesus, and so Christmas is also about finding peace in the one that you worship. It's, it's what it's all about. You know, if I could say anything today, what people really want, though, and I don't care if they know Jesus or not, what people really want is peace, isn't it? 
That's what they want. People want, everybody wants peace. But so many people don't know how to get it. And it's not even something you can get. So this morning, as we talk about the Messiah, I want to talk about an aspect of of Jesus. First of all, peace is found, but it's not found in material. It's found in Jesus. It's found in in the Messiah. Uh, There's a great scripture in Psalm. And kids, I'm going to have you help me here in a minute, but Psalm 26, 1 through 3 says this. It says, in that day, now Isaiah is describing uh, Christ, he's, he's describing the Messiah, but he's talking about the day he comes, which he, he has come. We know that Jesus was given, a son was given. It says, in that day, everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. Our city is strong. We are surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Open the gates to all those who are righteous. Allow the faithful to enter. Verse three says, you will, be, you will, be, you will keep in perfect peace or you'll be kept in perfect peace all who trust in you all those whose thoughts are fixed on you. So Isaiah says, when the Messiah comes, salvation comes. That's the reality of Jesus. That's what he died for. That's what he was sacrificed for. So everybody could have an opportunity to receive his salvation. Now, he paid the price whether you receive it or not, right? How many of you would like to get a gift at Christmas time but never really open it? Has that ever happened, kids, at Christmas where your parents gave you a gift and you didn't open it? Yes. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe that happened if maybe the gift was like way behind the tree and you didn't see it. You ever have one of those times where there was a gift that was like hidden in the stocking you didn't know about or, was, or it's hidden in the tree or maybe your parents played a, a crazy trick on you and they, they hid a gift and you had to find it, but you still opened it, right? You still opened it. Well, here's the amazing part about Jesus is he gives gifts all the time and a lot of times people don't even open them. Sometimes, even people that believe in Jesus, we we call those followers of Christ, even people that believe in Jesus, he's given a gift, but we won't take it. I'm thankful that we have a God who keeps trying. He keeps giving. Even even though sometimes we we don't open the gift. But how crazy would it be for you to wake up tomorrow, see all the gifts, and go, nah, not opening them. Not going to do it. No, it's, it's exciting to open those gifts, isn't it? It's amazing. It's, it's fun. You wrap it, and sometimes you scream, like, if you get the, if you get the switch, are you going to be excited? You're going to be excited if you get the switch? You'll be really excited when you get the chocolate. Yeah. I want switch, Just steal his. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. You'll be excited, too, huh? On your own, okay? You get excited to get a gift, don't you? You get excited to receive. You get excited to open it. You're grateful, right? You say thank you when you get a gift. Did you know in in Psalm 26, the Hebrew word for peace, maybe you know this is what? Shalom. Kids, say this with me. Say shalom. 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 Say it a little bit louder. Shalom. Shalom. That means peace. Shalom means peace. In Psalm 20, you know what? In the Hebrew, when, you, uh, when it says this verse, it says perfect peace. Do you know what the word for perfect is? In Hebrew, it's shalom. So this verse is really saying, in Psalm 26, it says, you will keep in perfect peace, or shalom, shalom. A lot of times if you, uh, go to other countries in Israel when they, that's how they greet you. We say hello or hi or we give high fives. But a lot of times if you go to Israel, they say shalom. Is, it's their greeting to say hello. They say shalom. It's their greeting to say goodbye. It's shalom. But it's so much more than just the word peace. The, the word shalom actually means a wholeness, a, a completeness. It, it means a fullness of peace. And when you put it together twice, When you say shalom, shalom, or perfect peace, they're talking about this peace that God not only wants to give you, but a peace that sustains you forever and ever. That we have a Messiah that you can find his peace wherever you are, whenever you want it, whenever you're seeking him, you can find peace. 
There's going to be a lot of times, whether you're an adult or a kid, where you where you're just there's a lot happening in your and it's just maybe you're it's chaotic or maybe it's busy or or maybe you're frustrated because your friends on the bus said something that wasn't nice and you just want peace. This was the promise that Christmas is all about: that Jesus would come and you can have His perfect peace. It doesn't mean everything's going to be good all the time. It doesn't mean that you're not going to experience trouble. It doesn't mean that you're, you're going to get everything you want. But regardless of all of those things, that you have a God that's going to be there with you to give you peace in every situation. I don't know if you know this, but Jesus didn't come in a time that it was like perfect. It was a wild time. In fact, Isaiah describes it as a, a time of darkness or a time that was just, uh, it wasn't what you expect when Jesus would come. And a lot of times that's the way it can be when you're going through school or you're going through life is it's not what you expect. But that's really the best time to find Christ. That's really the best time to find the Messiah. Psalm 26.3 says in a New International Version, it says it like this, that you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, but they put their trust in you. Isn't it interesting that peace is a mindset? You have to find peace, you have to find Christ, but you also have to choose to keep it. How many times do we give away our peace? How many times that it's not that Christ hasn't made it available to you, it's not that you don't know who Jesus is, but how many times do you go through life and that gift of peace is left there unopened? How many times are we in situations in our life where uh, regardless of what the situation is, the gift is sitting there, but we don't open it? It's there. It's available to you. We have to fix our minds. The, the, here's another fun word in Hebrew, and I, we're learning some Hebrew. We learn, what is peace, kids? Shalom. Shalom. Here's another one. Fixing your minds or, or setting your mind on something. And the, and the Hebrew is called samak. You can say that. Samak. So you got shalom and samak. Peace comes by fixing your mind or samak or thinking about Jesus. To lean on completely or to fully rest on him. That's what Isaiah says is that we have to put our complete trust in you. You have to set your mind. So, so peace is not only the one that you worship, it's not only wrapped up in who Jesus is, but it's also you choosing and I choosing. And it doesn't matter what age you are. We all have to choose to think about the right things. Philippians 4, one of our favorite verses in the Bible. It says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if, any of the, if there is any virtue that is praiseworthy, meditate on these things. We could change this and modernize it, right? We could say, think about chaos, think about worry, think about your paycheck, think about your friends, think about all the troubles, think about all the stress. But that's not what the scripture says. Sometimes, and if you know the verses right before Philippians 4, 8, it really is a good description. This is the way our minds should think. We think about the good things, the noble things, the trustworthy things, the things that are praiseworthy. But he also, I'm so thankful that Jesus gave us the Bible because he also says, in verse six of the same chapter, he says, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. And actually, if you read the verse, in verse seven, it says, if you'll do that, if you'll not worry and pray, if you'll come to God, if you'll seek him, right? If you'll samak, if you'll seek him. Remember that word that we said about perfect peace? Look at this, here it comes. If you'll, if you'll seek God, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, the shalom, shalom, that surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ. So there's the gift. The gift is, is thinking about the right things. The gift is, is opening the, opening the gift when Jesus gives it to you. The gift is peace, but the wrapping is your thoughts. The wrapping is the way you think. It's what you focus on. It's what you put your attention on. It's what you smuck. 
It's what you think. And if you put your things, if you'll think about the praiseworthy things, the good things. Kids, listen. How many of you have ever had a tough day, kids? You've ever had a tough day? Sometimes those tough days are not just because they're tough because you say they're tough, but they're, they're from other people, right? Sometimes your friends say things. Sometimes teachers, sometimes parents. Look, nobody's perfect in this world. But if you focus on the, the wrong things, then you have worry and you get frustrated and you sometimes get angry. But the Bible says, I want you to focus on the right things. Instead of focusing on the wrong thing, focus on something that's good and praiseworthy. What has God done good for you that day? Maybe tomorrow when you wake up and you open that gift, now you can be thankful and all day you can say, God, thank you for, for that wonderful gift you've given me. Thank you that my parents or my grandparents or my brother or my sister, thank you that they loved me enough to give me this gift. Do you know why you give gifts, kids? Because of this verse in Isaiah, it says, for unto us a son was given. Heaven gave you a gift called Jesus, and we give gifts because we're symbolizing what God has done for us. Jesus was a gift to us, and that's why we give gifts. And so you can be grateful for what you're going to receive tomorrow, but be grateful that the reason why we have Christmas every single year is because Jesus came and he gave his life for you. And so we honor our family, we honor our friends, we honor those that we love because the Father honored us with a wonderful gift called Jesus. And that's why we celebrate Christmas every single year. Finally, let me talk about the Prince of Peace. Isaiah described when the Messiah would come that it would be, one of the things that you would see would be light. But he described everything around Jesus as darkness, but regardless of what's going on, there will always be light. That when the Messiah comes, he'll illuminate. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, I didn't like the dark. Anybody like the dark? Kids, do you like the dark? How many of you have a little light in your room? Right, you have a little light in there. Now we've got all kinds of things that light up all the time. We've got, we've got flashlights on our phones. We've got, how many, of you, how many of you have had the lights go out? What do you do? What's the first thing you do when the lights go out? Some of you are really prepared. You got that flashlight ready. You know where it's at. Other you, of you are what? You're scattering to find the flashlight. Then you find the flashlight and the batteries are dead. And you're looking for batteries and we don't have any batteries. So then you try to find a candle, right? You try to find something. Isn't it amazing that little bit of light makes you feel comfort? It makes you feel peace. And Isaiah said, this is what it will be like when Jesus comes into the earth. Is that it's going to look like darkness. It's going to look like there's a lot of things that aren't right. There's gonna, it looks like sometimes the world can be mean. And sometimes the world can not, not be displayed in the way that God would want it to be displayed. But in the middle of all that... There's going to be a man that's going to come, and his name's going to be Jesus. And he's going to bring a light into a dark world. Isaiah 9, 2 says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of darkness, light has shined. Jesus came, not only at the perfect time, but he brought light and he brought peace and he brought goodness and gentleness and all of these great things he brought and the Bible and Jesus himself said I am the light you know someday someday we're going to go to heaven and the only light that's going to be needed is Jesus because he says I'm the light the Bible says there will be no sun or moon and that won't be scary that there's no sun or moon. I can't imagine what that looks like. No stars in heaven, no sun. We won't need it because Jesus will be there. Because he is the light and it will be perfect. And the way that we see things and intend to see things, it will be perfect because he's perfect. So 
So as you walk out of here today, I hope we learned quite a few things. The first one being, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Peace means, in, in the original language, it's shalom, shalom. When you wake up tomorrow, just before you open the gifts, before you rip into all of them, just say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you. And before you jump on mom and dad at 47 and 100 and three and five, <laughs> as you jump on them, say, shalom. No, I'm just kidding. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. But peace, peace. Regardless of what your life looks like, and I, whether you're a kid or an adult or a big kid in here, on a serious note, the Lord came to give you more than just salvation. And that's, listen, that is great. I don't want to diminish salvation, but he gave to give you a, a perspective. He came so you could see things in a whole new way. He came, Jesus' own words, to give you abundant life. A life that is, it's not, it's not like you get an abundant life when you go to heaven, although that's going to be phenomenal. But he gave you to have an abundant life now. And he didn't just come so we can just meander through life and be mediocre Christians and follow Christ in a halfway. He came so you can be excited about the one that you worship. I think, I don't remember, I think Jen was saying this the other day about, wouldn't it be great if every time we came into the presence of God, we'd be like kids on Christmas morning. Kids, you gotta know, Jesus said, I want you to have a faith like a child. We should be excited to gather like this together. We be, should be excited to worship Jesus. We should be excited to go to school and tell people about this great Savior, this great Messiah named Jesus that came to give us peace. And he said, I want you to be a light. Just like I'm a light, I want you to be a light. So tonight, or this morning, we always end our services, and I love candlelight services for many reasons, but it's not just the beauty of candlelight. It's the beauty of that Jesus is the one true light. And in John 8, 12, here's, here's what he says, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow these candles out. I just blew wax everywhere. That was great. You can help me out there? Great, thank you. Thank you. And then I'm going to use you guys as, as help. John 8, 12. Jesus himself said this. Then Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Just like Isaiah said, he'd be the light. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And so guys, I'm going to have you shut the lights out for me. We call this the Christ candle because this is what it looked like when Christ came. Now I'm thankful for our little night lights. But he said the world would come and it'd be dark. There'd be a darkness to it. But that Jesus would come and he'd bring the light. And then he said, not only am I the light of the world, but you now have the light of life inside of you. So our job is to share that light. And so if you guys would help me, we're just gonna spread. And as you do this, this is, this is what we're supposed to do in life. Mike, and not blow out our candle. We're supposed to, we're supposed to share it. But watch how fast this room lights up as we 
symbolically pass our light to one another. But what the Lord was saying is this is what we're to do. We're to be an example. The Bible describes it as a mirror. When you look in the mirror, we're supposed to, we're supposed to show an image that points to the one that we worship. And regardless of how dark it gets in life, you can know this, that he came for you. He came to give you peace. He came to give you life. And he is the light of the world. And you're to tell all those about you, about the one that came and the one that saved you. Let's pray this this morning. And then we're gonna sing Silent Night together before we dismiss. Lord, thank you. Lord, as we pass these lights around and as the room gets a little bit brighter, light by light, let us remember it started with you. I believe, Lord, that you came at the exact time. I believe there wasn't, it was dark. It amazes me that thousands and millions didn't come to worship you, that just you and Mary and Joseph and a few shepherds came. And of course, the angels of heaven. Lord, I believe you came at the right time, not only to save the world, but to offer salvation to every person that ever lives on this earth, that they can know you, that they can receive from you. And Jesus, I pray as we go through tomorrow and as we go through into next year, let us remember that you're the Prince of Peace, that peace is is how we view things. You didn't come to give us destruction. You didn't come to give us division. You came to give us peace. And so let us remember to look to you, to thank you, to be grateful for those trustworthy things, those good things, those things that are worthy to be praised. Peace comes by focusing on you, not by what we get in life or what we're trying to achieve, but it comes by worshiping you. And so, Lord, we honor you today. The eve of Christmas, we can't wait to see you someday in person, face to face. But until then, we'll let our light shine and tell everyone about you. In Jesus' name, everyone said? If you'll stand to your feet, let's sing this together.